Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of The Beatles Forever. Um, today we're going to talk about John Lennon after his breakup with the Beatles and why he decided to move to the Dakotas in, in New York City, the Dakota apartment building I should say, and what it was like there. John and Oko decided to move to America in New York City in 1971. Yoko had been married before to a filmmaker named Anthony Cox, and they had a daughter named Kyoto. Anthony took Kyoto and disappeared, and so John and Yoko thought it would be easier to find her if they lived in the United States. Uh, they also came to America because in England, people didn't seem to like Yoko and kept asking John why he was with her. And also there was like he had problems with drugs and he was getting hassled uh, there in England. And another big reason was because there was the high income tax rate in England, so it was easier to live, cheaper to live in America. Um, John and Yoko sublet the apartment from the actor Robert Ryan. It was number 72. Uh, when the actor's wife died in 1973, he couldn't stand being there anymore because of all the painful memories. So John and Yoko bought it. And their apartment overlooked Central Park, which must have been a beautiful sight to see there. And then, through the years, they bought four additional apartments, including one next door to them, number 71. Uh, the Dakotas were a magnet to the rich and famous, dating all the way back to 1884. Among the rich and famous who have lived there are the Steinway family, Lauren Bacall, Bono from U2, Jack Palance, Lillian Gish, Boris Karloff, Rosemary Clooney, Connie Chung, and Mari Povich. The place was so sought after that for 64 years there were no vacancies that were available, and that is from 1884 to 1929. That's pretty incredible. <laughs> According to the article in the New York Times, John Lennon was known in the apartment as a protective father and a real estate collector. Uh, the real estate collector part kind of upset the residents because he bought five apartment, apartments while he was there. But John liked living there because at the Dakota, there was a lot of famous people there, and he had privacy, and everyone seemed to keep to themselves. According to the Beale historian, some of the neighbors weren't too happy that he put twine near the elevators to keep his son, Sean, from falling through the railings. He also had an apartment downstairs, and he would play his guitar in the office and had words helter-skelter across one of the walls. Um, he was thinking about the song before you know Charles Manson did what he did, but... The neighbors were thinking the opposite way, so that didn't go over too well. And then later, he got rid of the, that wall and replaced it with blue skies and clouds. Uh, and the neighbors, as I said before, didn't like John and Yoko buying up all the apartments. But instead of being mad at John, they were a little bit uh, intimidated by him. Uh, it was easier to be mad at Yoko. <laughs> and uh, she bore the brunt of all the uh, the business dealings. Uh, the Dakota switchboard, they said, had to handle 30 calls a day regarding fans that were trying to reach John. Uh, fans would gather outside the buildings hoping to see the Lennons, and some of them would sneak past security and start ringing doorbells trying to find out where John lived. Um, that must have been very irritating, buying an expensive apartment in the city and then having all that big security and then finding out that these people that they knew nothing about were going around ringing doorbells trying to find John Lennon. As it was said in the article, uh, when John Lennon moved to the Dakota, they took the apartment that formerly belonged to the actor Robert Ryan. Uh, Robert Ryan's wife, Jessie, to whom he was devoted, died of cancer at the uh, Dakota, and there was unhappy memories and associations that it held for him. Uh, he lived in the area that was near the 88 Central Park South, uh, so he just decided to leave, and then a short while later, he also died. Uh, before settling in the Ryan's old apartment, the Lennons decided it would be wise to hold a seance <laughs> to see what spirits might be inhabiting their new home. Uh, a medium was summoned, and she quickly made contact with Jesse Ryan. That was Robert Ryan's deceased wife, and Mrs. Mrs. Ryan informed the Lennons that she considered their apartment her home, too, and that she intended to stay there, and she would not disturb them in any way. 
and they could lead their lives as they wish. And Jesse Ryan was apparently as gracious and charming from beyond as she had been in life. Uh, Yoko Ono telephoned Ryan's daughter, Lisa, to tell her that her late mother was still happily at home at the Dakota. Of course, this didn't sit well with Lisa Ryan. Uh, she said, if my mother's ghost belongs anywhere, it's here with me and not with them, she said. <laughs> so that was kind of an interesting thing. I think that came from a New York Times article uh, regarding the quotes about the seance. <clears throat> and John liked the Dakotas also, Dakota building also. I keep saying Dakotas <laughs> like it was North and South Dakota, but we're talking about the apartments. <laughs> But uh, anyway, he liked the, the building because it reminded him of a Victorian building. And speaking of ghosts, uh, John Lennon one time said to Yoko that he saw a ghost of a lady crying in the hallway. And after John Lennon had died, uh, Yoko said she saw him sitting at the white piano and he told her, don't be afraid, I'm still with you. So... Uh, this is kind of a touching uh, thing to see, and I feel like John would still want to be at the place he loved and with the woman he loved, and so the Dakota really helped a warm attachment to both John and Yoko. And I could see why she still wanted to remain there at the building after John's death, um, because of the years they spent there together, and John, feeling John's presence, she probably still feels his presence there, so... You can see why this building held a, a, a huge attachment for both of them. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the um, the video, and please like and subscribe. And I'll be back with another episode of The Beatles Forever soon. Thank you, and have a, a good day today.